Hey guys, yeah, we're really happy and excited to bring you another uh, company profile. We've been uh, talking to uh, very exciting early stage companies, giving you a, a chance to know a little bit more and expand your knowledge when it comes to uh, smaller companies still in the early stages of development. We're going to talk to Blue Lagoon Resources today uh, in the gold space. Uh, President and CEO Raina Vig joining us uh, to discuss Blue Lagoon uh, this morning. Uh, it's so great to have you, uh, Raina, with us uh, this morning. We're going to touch a little bit on uh, some current projects the company is involved in. I want to talk about your background because it's very interesting that I think a lot of people will be uh, interested uh, in and excited about. So let's jump right into things. Why don't you give us a little bit of an overview when it comes to uh, Blue Lagoon, where the concept came from, and how things got started. Sure. Well, uh, thanks very much, first of all, for uh, having me here uh, this morning. It's a pleasure. Yeah, Blue Lagoon Resources is a relatively young company. I, I put that together uh, last year. We, we started trading on July 4th of 2019. And uh, we're focused uh, on the uh, on the gold sector. You know, what everything that I was reading was telling me that uh, gold is going to be the the next big play. Uh, you know, when you read sort of the what's happening in, in, in the in the uh, at the macro level in, around the world. Uh, so I decided to, to jump in and uh, laser beam focus on that. And I think we're going to do quite well. I've had a uh, very colorful uh, background and an experienced uh, background when it comes to bringing companies to uh, both the public markets and uh, to to life in general. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, background when it comes to the cannabis space? Sure. Yeah. You know, most of my life, I've been in private uh, business uh, over 30 years uh, of uh, family businesses, uh, five different startups over the years. You know, basically, I'm a startup guy. You know, I learned a long time ago that I'm not that smart. Okay. So the great equalizer for me are two things. Number one, just outwork everybody, work, uh, you know, super hard. And number two, just be the dumbest guy in the room, right? Just surround yourself uh, with uh, exceptionally smart people in specifically in the industry that, that you're in. And that's worked well for me. So about 10 years ago, I jumped into the capital markets. Uh, my mentor uh, is a very, very successful uh, venture uh, capitalist worth over $300 million. Uh, made most of his money in the beginning in mining. So he invited me to, to get involved and I did. And uh, uh, frankly, uh, it was quite the entry in 2010, 2011, 2012, uh, when I put over a million bucks into the into the sector, the mining sector and uh, it all collapsed. So about six months later, it was only worth about 10 grand. I mean, it was just like, whoa, it was like a, like, like a rude awakening. What did I get myself into? But you know, I'm a big boy. I, I, I licked my wounds and uh, took over the, uh, the the mining exploration companies that I had invested in and uh, learned the ropes because you know the basics and fundamentals of business don't change, right? It doesn't matter what business you're in, the basics are are, are constant. So, surrounding myself with the great technical people and I started uh, working in the industry. But unfortunately, you know, for seven eight years that I was involved in there, the mining sector just didn't catch on, but cannabis did. So I exited those companies. I did the RTOs uh, and turned them into technology companies and focused laser beam focused on cannabis. And I took a company called Cureleaf Public in 2018. Cureleaf was the largest Canadian cannabis uh, raise in history. It was a $520 million raise and nearly a $6 billion RTO. So, you know, made a lot of money and uh, made a lot of money for uh, friends and family and folks who, who came along for the ride. And then a couple of months later, I was uh, uh, fortunate again because uh, cannabis, uh, U.S. cannabis in particular, was still very, very exciting. So I found another company out of uh, Arizona called Harvest Health and Rec and uh, took them public. And that became the third largest in 2018, a $300 million raise and uh, nearly a $2 billion RTO. So, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a, a lot of fun. But you know what? I always wanted to uh, to uh, come back to mining because mining, when it hits, when when the cycle starts, uh, the growth is explosive, right? The returns are just incredible, tenfold, twentyfold, are un, are not uh, are not uh, unheard of in that sector. So I, uh, yeah, everything I was reading about what was happening around the world. I thought, you know what? This is the time. Uh, everyone thought I was crazy two years ago. I thought this is the time to get back into mining and focus particularly on gold. And uh, so that uh, was the uh, was the impetus to start uh, Blue Lagoon Resources. And you, you pick a very interesting time to get back into the gold markets. We had uh, all-time highs recently uh, as far as the price for gold is concerned. I want to get your thoughts on that uh, coming up here in uh, in a couple of minutes. But I just want to touch on uh, a very key point that I think you made there. And that, uh, that goes back to, you know, it's okay if you're not necessarily the smartest guy in the room, but if you surround yourself with the right people, and this can apply to, you know, anyone who's really in any space, 
you know, if you surround yourself with the right people and the right support uh, mechanisms, uh, there's really uh, no no limits to what can be accomplished. So uh, let's uh, let's jump over to Blue Lagoon. Tell us about uh, the the main projects that are underway right now and what uh, what you are most excited about when it comes to Blue Lagoon. Yeah, and, and on that last point, yeah, absolutely, it's very important. I mean, you obviously have to be good at something, right? I mean, you know, I'm good at execution, right? But I don't need to be good at the technical aspects of of the uh, you know, whether it's a uh, a geology or, or or whether I'm running a restaurant and I don't need to to understand how to cook the food, right? You know, so as long as you know how to execute on a plan and how to manage people and, you know, the basics, uh, you know, the key is to get to the, the smart people in that industry around you and, and you make the business decisions, right? That's the key. Uh, Blue Lagoon is a, is a very exciting uh, a company. You know, we acquired this uh, project uh, just six, uh, almost seven months ago. It's a fully permitted, uh, mine in northern British Columbia, uh, and it just needs two amendments, uh, sorry, three amendments to get it back into production. Uh, these people who owned it before me had, were there for a dozen years, spent uh, over $28 million on mine development, infrastructure, and permitting. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, you know, for them, they ran out of time. You know, they're not wonderful people, but they're 83 years old and uh, not in the best of health. So I came along, uh, picked up this uh, project, uh, really at an incredibly uh, cheap uh, valuation, and, and no cash uh, was paid, and it was an all-stock deal, and I escorted them for almost three years. So it was amazing. So we have a fully permitted mine that we believe uh, we're on track to be in a, in a, in a, in a decision to be in production uh, by summer of next year. Uh, it's only a million and a half dollar capex, believe it or not, uh, because it get, literally it's on the one yard line. So I'm executing on, the, on, that, uh, on, the, on those three key things. And then uh, on the second part of the, our company is that we have this massive 12,000 hectare property that has 15 high grade veins already identified that we're going to be going after here. Yet 90% of the property was never explored because their focus was always on just trying to get the mine into production. Uh, so we have a, a couple of plays get the, become a near term uh, cash producer as well as a huge Opportunity. The blue sky is is amazing on this uh, on, on this play here to be able to find uh, more and to prove that we have a lot more gold and silver uh, uh, based on the historical data that we have. And and two key points on both of those projects. The first one uh, you were mentioning, uh, we spoke yesterday briefly uh, that the uh, the northern BC project has uh, 12 month access, so it's it's available for uh, work to be uh, conducted upon, you know, mm -hmm. all throughout the year. And the second one, I, I mean, that's a, that's a very large uh, chunk of land, uh, and you talk about only 10% has been explored at this point, so amazing opportunity left to be discovered there. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, a lot of these projects are in remote areas. We're very fortunate that we're not in a remote area, right? Uh, many projects uh, require helicopters to fly in, which is very, very expensive drilling. You know, you have to put put up expensive camps and, and keep them heated for your people. That's expensive. We're outside a town called Smithers. Uh, literally, you can grab a, a coffee from your Starbucks, and uh, by the time you get to the mine site, it's still warm, right? I mean, so it's like uh, 45 minutes uh, minutes away. Uh, all year round access uh, by forest service roads. So we're very fortunate uh, that way. Also for uh, employee retention is very important because you know people can go work there during the day, come home, have dinner, kiss their uh, kids goodnight and get back to work the next day, right? So all those things make, uh, make uh, for a, a very uh, a compelling story uh, and, and reduce our costs uh, uh, as we explore and as we get to, uh, get to uh, closer to uh, you know, production. Then CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources, Raina Vig, joining us. Uh, Raina, let's talk a little bit about timelines going forward when it comes to uh, both of these projects. You mentioned uh, early start in 21 as far as the next uh, drilling uh, project is con is concerned. What what timeline then beyond that are you looking at for possible results? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, we have two things going on. We're, we're, we're working uh, very hard to uh, get those amendments done. They're not very onerous. It's about a six-month timeline, timeline, and we're well in, into, into that process right now. So we'll have that. We should be in a position to, to get uh, make that decision by summer of next year. And then dr drilling is going to start on January the 11th, and we expect to be drilling throughout Q1 and Q2. And, you know, in mining companies, news flow is very important. And, and, and I understand better than most CEOs because in my previous life, I owned an advertising agency. So one of the things I learned in this business when I got on the capital markets, really you're in, in two businesses. You're in the business of, you know, exploring and, and, and developing your, your, your project, but you're also in the business of managing the market, right? You, you need to understand that uh, these micro caps, uh, these, these small companies, 
you know, it's not build them and they will come, right? It doesn't exactly happen. You have to be engaged. You have to be engaged with your audience like this, for example, and many more to be able to let them know, hey, we exist. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have news flow constantly uh, from January right throughout the summer uh, uh, about what's happening with the drilling and, 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 the, and the results. And so far, the, the drill results we've, uh, we've put out have been fantastic. They've been, they've been amazing and they're reconfirming everything that we already believe about the property. And we expect uh, to be uh, in the same position here uh, throughout Q1 and Q2. So lots of news, which of, of course drives uh, the stock. Now, Reno, on a higher level, uh, let's talk about uh, gold itself uh, briefly here. I mean, this market has been a little bit overheated, I guess, coming into the end of this year. We got to all-time highs, bit of a pullback recently. But give us your thoughts. I mean, uh, you know, Blue Lagoon as a company, pretty close, near term uh, to production. Uh, give us your thoughts on the overall gold market. Well, look, if there was ever a time, if anyone had wanted to be in the, involved in the precious uh, metals, this is, the, this is the time because what's happening in the world is just simply unprecedented, right? I mean, number one, we have the unlimited supply of money being created. I mean, it's just amazing that, you know, we thought uh, 2008 and 2009, when that financial crisis happened, you know, it was bad. You know, we're about 750 billion was injected into, into the economy. And it was like, wow, you know, uh, quantitative easing was the new sort of term at the time right now it's like you know qe forever so those are drivers for the gold uh, you know uh, uh, prices uh, I, I think it's uh, i was reading the other day uh, another uh, i think we're at like three trillion already and another couple of trillion is just what the united states wants to to put out uh, more in, 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 into the money supply and that's of course just the, the u.s canada is the same you know around the world similar situations governments are broke right they need to create uh, more uh, money and put it in, so that they can uh, you know look good basically right because i mean let's face it governments lie right they lie all the time they're driven by their uh, their uh, personal agendas which is just to get back uh, to get reelected leaders today are spineless they don't tell us the truth so those are all things that help the price of the metal so you've got a, uh, you've got unlimited uh, printing of money going on that devalues currency you've got a riots and demonstrations going on all over the world i mean it's just amazing never seen anything like this and on top of that you've got the perfect trifactor of a world pandemic right so these are all uh, uh, this is the environment that that gold thrives on so you know and then you've got uh, other uh, big players like warren buffett who never liked gold for the first time is has an invested in gold because he's lost confidence in the in the in the, in, in the banking system he's lost confidence in, in, in the dollar so he's coming in, into gold you've got uh, the Ohio pension and fire uh, a fund for the first time a 16 billion dollar fund who just allocated five percent of their uh, their uh, the, the fund to uh, to gold for the first time and there's hundreds of these right so you know these are all uh, uh, factors catalysts that are going to drive the price of gold much higher and it's an interesting time, obviously, for the overall uh, market, especially on the uh, political front. We do have uh, a couple of questions, Raina, that uh, I want to make sure we get to from our audience. So I'm going to throw you over to Neil quickly. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for, for coming on, Raina. And uh, uh, obviously, you're part psychic. Uh, two of these questions that came, and I'm not even making this up because our viewers have been, uh, been throwing them in here. Um, uh, one of them, I'm going to try to combine them because it was a very similar aspect. And uh, one was uh, talking about after the recent run-up in gold. Uh, how can you, we how can we be certain that we are in an early cycle move? And I, you kind of already touched upon this one. I'm going to double down because uh, another question we got from Isa, and I did catch uh, the name of this viewer, uh, was uh, did you guys uh, or have you taken advantage of uh, of COVID? Now, you've talked about what I was going to sort of reiterate here, of course, uh, that even as there was more printing of money, you got all that stimulus, it was a bit of a slow reaction, I want to say, uh, in the overall uh, appreciation of, of gold. I see you guys, I have the chart up, you guys have doubled uh, a bit of a double move here in the last little bit here. Uh, so obviously that's good. Now, given that we expect stimulus could be delayed going into next year, do you have any thoughts in terms of a timeline when you could see a secondary push, which I do believe a lot of people are coming in the overall price of gold? And is there any sort of changes that you guys are making to your overall business plan? And it, it just given what's happened in this last year in COVID, obviously, you know, I know you guys are, you know, getting into production, of course, uh, so that might not be possible. Is there anything that you uh, have changed in terms of your outlook? It's been a crazy year. So just your thoughts on those two things. Yeah, you know, we, we're very fortunate. Uh, COVID has not affected us that much uh, in, because we're uh, up in northern British Columbia. And BC, actually, uh, this region has been quite uh, good uh, in terms of uh, the infection rates, been quite controlled, especially up in the north, has been very, very limited. 
So we've been not affected at all. Work hasn't been affected. Uh, the miners, the drillers, everybody's been, been on track. And you know what? I'm in a very uh, in a good position because I don't have to change uh, a lot of my business plan because gold. The nice thing about the uh, exploration company is, uh, you know, even if you don't do a, a whole lot, as long as you have a good property and you've got the goods, if gold price goes up, silver price goes up. You know, that's a huge bonus. By the way, silver is something that we hardly ever you know, talk about. We have in our on our property, we have a four to one ratio on, on gold to silver. So this, it's like getting the silver for free. You know, this, so, so you know, we're, it's not when we send to the, our, our product, uh, when we send to the, the ore to the to the uh, to the mill, it's not like they say that uh, we're going to charge you X amount for the gold and this much more for the silver. So, you know, so that's going to become a, a very important factor as well for these companies. But no, look. There is, uh, we are in the beginning of this cycle and how we know that is because for the last uh, almost 10 years, gold, gold has been kind of stuck around 1250, 1400, right? And if you look at it historically, right? That's what happened in 2008 and 2009. Well, first it pulled back and then it ran to that, to that next uh, you know, high, which happened here uh, recently. And, and you watch, I, we fundamentally believe that it's gonna happen again. It's not even so much that the gold is going higher, it's that the currency is getting devalued more and more. I mean, think about it. If you bought a, a, an ounce of gold in the 70s, Right, it was about thirty-five dollars. If you buried it in the ground, that one piece of little piece of metal in the ground at thirty-five dollars, and you took thirty-five dollars and you buried it side by side, and you came back today and you dug them back up, that one little piece of metal is now worth eighteen fifty, nineteen hundred. You take the thirty-five dollars, what's it worth? What two cups of coffee at Starbucks? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right. So it's not so much gold's going up; it's that the currency keeps getting devalued further and further, which only means. Right, so that's just one factor. Also, don't forget, there is only 1.5% of supply that's added every year, gold supply that's added every year. That's it, only 1.5%. That's all the gold there is. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a constrained supply. So, you know, there are a lot of these dynamics, right? That's why uh, Bank of America recently is projecting that they, they expect gold to be $3,000 uh, next year. So I don't know if we will get to 3,000, but you know what? I, even at these levels, at 1,900, 1,850, 2,000, 2,100, that is extremely profitable for miners, right? There's a lot of money to be made. Uh, and I think that's what the, what the bottom line is. Uh, Reina, just to wrap things up here, uh, if, as from an investor standpoint, let's talk a little bit about uh, upcoming dates that we uh, need to be aware of. We like to keep an eye on things that are coming up in the near term future. Tell us one or two uh, near term dates that uh, you know, are on the horizon, but uh, maybe a few weeks or months out. Yeah, I think uh, a couple of key things are going uh, to be is uh, when we start uh, drilling again, right? That'll be in, in January. Uh, we have some results coming up here in the next uh, about three weeks, I think, that are going to be very important. They're going to tell the market uh, what, uh, what we recently discovered that we haven't, uh, you know, news released yet. I think the market's going to like that. And then when we start drilling in, on January 11th, we're going to start. Uh, the results will start coming in you know, you know, from that point. It's also our expectation in, in sometime in February, uh, 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 mid to late February. You know, We have about uh, 5,500 tons of uh, mineralized material sitting in the tunnel there at the mine. That's, where, that's about 1,500 ounces. We expect to truck that out and 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 you know monetize that. I think that's going to be an important date because it's going to tell the market. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, execution is very important. I'm laser beam focused on getting things done, and I think that's going to tell the market again that we're executing on on our plan. And then just uh, you know uh, the rest of the uh, the spring, right? I think there'll be lots of results to watch for, and those are the things. Or those are the catalysts, you know, that uh, that uh, move uh, you know exploration stocks. And the other thing is, of course, is gold. If gold breaks out as it's expected, you watch these stocks. Uh, you know, they, it's just, it's just uh, you pinch yourself. Well, you guys are traders, so you know, you know when moves happen, how, how quickly they can happen. And uh, that's exactly what typically happens in junior exploration companies, is that when gold moves you know, one point, uh, the, the junior miners move up multiples, many multiples of that, right? And that's what's, uh, that's what's exciting, I think, that's coming up. So 2021 is going to be a very, very exciting uh, year for companies like ours in this, uh, in this uh, precious metals uh, junior mining space. President and CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources, Raina Vega, pleasure, sir. Come back and give us an update in the near future. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. There we go, guys. A little bit of a look at uh, Blue Lagoon Resources as we continue to give you a little bit of uh, a sneak peek at some uh, some smaller companies that you might not be aware of. Yet. Guys.